Hi, I'm Jeff Simon, AMP IA and President of Social Flight. And I'm here with the experts at Continental Aerospace Technologies to talk about engines, specifically how to make TBO with your engine. Now, making TBO starts with a proper installation, and that includes baffling, hoses, all the things that go into ensuring that your engine is surrounded by the proper components and installed in a way that is going to last. Now, part of that installation includes setup, and that includes both magneto timing and fuel setup for your aircraft. This is very important because without this step, we don't know that the engine is operating within the parameters it was designed for. And with that, it does matter, of course, that you're flying it. Because with that engine in place, you need to get out there and fly, ensure that corrosion stays out of the aircraft and lubrication happens. This is the best thing that you can do for your engine as well as the rest of the aircraft. And while you're flying, let's talk about how the, that aircraft is operated. The pilot's operating handbook contains information on how to properly operate the engine within its limits. And by doing that, you're ensuring that you're within the design specs and have the best chance at making TBO with your engine. The last part of the process is proper maintenance during the life of the engine. And that includes oil changes, mag timing checks, and everything else that goes into ensuring that every step of the way it's getting the maintenance that it needs. So let's take a minute to talk with the experts here at Continental about how to make TBO with your engine. I'm here with Bradley Turpak and Mark Cummins, product support engineers with Continental Aerospace Technologies. How are you doing, guys? Doing well, Jeff. Good, Jeff. How are you? Now, making TBO starts with a solid foundation, and that's the installation of the engine in the aircraft. So tell us a little bit about what really matters in that. That's right. Um, upon installation of a new engine, you need to ensure that the baffling's in good condition, security of the baffling's where it needs to be, uh, condition of the exhaust, security of the exhaust. Uh, the propeller and governor need to be flushed and or I ran inspection or an overhaul um, to ensure that you're not contaminating that new engine with old engine oil. Also, you need to ensure that the engine airframe hoses are in good condition. Essentially, we're, we're taking the engine and we're looking at anything that can go in or out of the engine, which includes, as you mentioned, even putting the propeller on where oil flows in or out, or the governor that oil flows in or out, hoses, things like that, and then protecting the engine with mounts, exhaust, everything that goes around it. Mm -hmm. And not to mention the, uh, the baffling, that's hugely important. Uh, absolutely. And when we think about baffling, it doesn't just direct cooling air over the cylinders, it also ensures that that cooling air goes over the oil cooler. So that baffling is, is really all of the cooling of the engine, whether it's oil or air cooling. That's correct. And each time you have the cowling off the engine, you need to be inspecting those items. Right. We usually think about installation as the first time that an aircraft engine is mounted. But realistically, every 100 hour or annual inspection is a chance to evaluate how the engine's installed and, and that directly translates to that longevity. That's right. So after installation in the aircraft, you've got setup and that's really setup and adjustment. Tell us a little bit about that, Mark. Yeah, Jeff, you need to set up your fuel system uh, after installation and that needs to be done at annual and 100 hour inspections and when you set up your, your fuel system you're checking several different items. You check your unmetered fuel pressure which is at idle, uh, your idle RPM and idle mixture rise and you'll also check your metered pressure at the top end of your engine's operating range. Instructions on all of that are in the area of continental air maintenance records or documents and that like I say that needs to be done every 100 hours or annual. It's interesting because usually when you think about an, a traditional annual inspection, uh, it's really only the engine timing that's getting checked by a lot of people. But it is really important, obviously, to check the fuel side of it. If your fuel system is not set up correctly, you definitely can lead yourself to engine problems, mostly cylinder problems due to potential for lean mixture. Uh, and that's something that can be detrimental. 
I've heard uh, also that uh, uh, people uh, with some debate if they have digital fuel uh, analyzers, digital engine analyzers with fuel flow and things like that, uh, using those in place of uh, doing the, the correct setup process you have in the manual. Can you talk to me a little bit about the importance of that? You know, the thing is, is our process in our manuals, you may know, okay, I'm going to predict fuel at the next fuel stop and I'm going to get so much and you're within a tenth or two, but that really doesn't give you the information that you need to know on your engine's pressures. It right. needs to be set up and done per our instructions. And that's a really important thing. There is a specific rig that's required that has those actual uh, gauges to measure pressure because the fuel setup on these engines is done by pressure. It's not based on fuel flow. And that's important because it's very different from actually seeing the overall fuel flow to the engine versus knowing exactly what's happening at each stage after and before the fuel pump. Precisely. That, that's good information. That needs to be checked regularly uh, just to have good health for your engine. So once you have an engine properly installed and now we've got it set up, it's time for break-in. Tell us a little bit about what's involved in the break-in process. So the most critical hours of the engine's life are the first two hours. Um, we call out in our M0 manual the proper break-in procedure. In short, it's a shallow climb at 75% power, best power, uh, maintain 75% best power for an hour, and then after the first hour, you will do 75% best power and 65% best power alternating every 15 to 30 minutes. It's critical to ensure that the piston rings are seating to the cylinder wall and ensuring the pressures or there to make that happen. And that's done with uh, mineral oil because obviously we've got friction that we want to happen during that part of the process. That friction actually mating those uh, cylinder rings to the cylinder walls and making that entire process happen. And um, you know, I got to see that firsthand when we did the cylinders on our uh, Bonanza. And that was done with Continental's own flight test uh, uh, expert. And it was really interesting to watch that flight path and to see him follow those exact procedures. And I'm happy to report that a long time after that, everything is just running fine. And, and we're certainly on our way to TBO. Great. Talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on getting out there and flying and then what happens if you can't fly and whether you should be idling the aircraft on the ground if the weather uh, is just keeping you from flying or, or something like that. You know Jeff there's there's a you know a lot of different areas around the country with different weather um, patterns and there are locations where you sh certainly can't fly in the winter time or it's very challenging to. Uh, there's a misconception where I'm going to go warm my, air, my engine up, taxi it around, all of that. Um, if you don't operate your engine for about an hour and get it up to operating temperature, you're not boiling off the condensation that's internal in your engine. That's just a byproduct of the engine operating. Um, what you would like to see is your oil temp around 180 degrees Fahrenheit and your cylinder head temperature is 375 around that range. Um, that helps boil off your condensation in your engine, plus your engine's lubricated well and sealed up well, you know, pre preserved well from that. Now, if you're, you are going to be inoperative for a period of 90 days or more, we have a procedure in our manuals for preserving the engine, and we would strongly recommend that. That makes sense. Yes. So I guess the, the, you know, what people think about of this idea that if you really can't get out there and fly, that it somehow makes sense to go and at least warm up the engine a little bit, at least get something turning. That's not necessarily doing good things for your engine. That, that's definitely not. You know, and there's a misconception about rotating the propeller and exercising the engine. Actually, what you're doing is that all that's preserving your cylinders, you're just scraping off. Right. So that's definitely something you do not want to do. Right. I mean, in normal operation of an engine, you're creating the byproducts of the combustion process, which are water and acids Correct. that get suspended into that oil. Mm -hmm. And we need to actually bring the engine up to temperature, boil off the water, and change the oil routinely in order to actually get it out, because that's the only way that the acids get out of the engine. That's correct. 
The last step in the process of making it to TBO is routine maintenance. And so that includes the annual inspections, the fuel setup, oil filters, oil changes. What can you tell me about that? Being consistent with your maintenance is important. Um, as far as oil changes, if you have a screen type filter every 25 hours, if you have a canister type filter every 50 hours. Following our maintenance manuals, it's also very important. Uh, venturing outside of that, we don't recommend. Being consistent with your maintenance is the most important. So we got a solid installation. We broke it in properly. We went to the step of making sure that everything was set up properly and is maintained that way, and you keep flying the plane. Any last thoughts on what helps people get to a TBO? Fly your engine. Enjoy your airplane and your engine. I'm here with Stephen Bordeaux, Director of Global Customer Support for Continental Aerospace Technologies. How are you doing, Steve? Good, Jeff. Welcome. You know, I really appreciate so much guidance from your team, getting information from the experts on how to make TBO with your engine. That's really what matters, because ultimately, the engine started with Continental and is going to come back to Continental. And so getting there and being able to not have any incidents along the way is really helpful. Great. Thanks, Jeff. The, the big thing is, is our global team of experts are here to support all our customers. Uh, you can reach out to us via email, via phone call. Though all that information is located on our website. And while you're on the website, please look into our new training programs. Our new training, we've revamped the whole training program, level one and level two, and we built it not just for mechanics. It's for pilots, owners of the aircraft, for everyone involved, all our customers. We want to be able to educate all our customers and provide the, the best service possible for our customers. Excellent. And I can say certainly as one of your customers uh, flying behind a Continental engine, I really appreciate that expertise. I appreciate knowing that the parts are coming from the source, that I'm getting the right information, and that ultimately when it goes back, to you. It'll all be uh, done exactly right. And so I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. And I like to fly Continental. <laughs>